let's see. So let me. Now that Stephen erased everything, <laughs> let, me, let me write write this again. So we have this, but it's it's sitting as at at just one prime. Okay, and uh, let's see. So and then we had. Uh, th of x, uh, which we should think of as a, a generalization of uh, killer differentials, and uh, and then we have this uh, Frobenius map <coughs> here, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to write. Well, maybe I will. So here we have the circle acting. And then we have the root isomorphism to uh, this smaller circle, which acts here, and this map is equivariant with respect to that. <coughs> uh, okay, so uh, so now uh, define C P X to be the Tate spectrum with respect to the full circle. There's a spectral sequence that uh, calculates the homotopy groups of that, which begins in the singular cohomology of P infinity minus infinity C with coefficients in the homotopy groups of uh, TH8 and converges to the homotopy groups of this. <coughs> and uh, all my spectral sequences are in, I always use SEA grading. So differentials go from uh, E, R, I, J to uh, E, R, I minus R, J plus R minus one. <coughs> Okay, maybe I should say what this is. So, uh, so over infinite uh, projective space, we have the canonical line bundle <coughs> uh, O of one, and uh, so we can take n times that. This is now a rank n bundle, and if we take the tome spectrum of that, then we get uh, a space that, so remember that infinite projective space has a CW structure with one cell in every even dimension from degree zero and up. Then this has a, a cell structure with one cell in every de even degree from degree two n and up. Uh, and if this in spectral, n uh, is allowed to be negative and uh, then uh, p infinity minus infinity is then uh, the inverse limit as n goes to minus infinity of uh, of these <coughs> so <coughs> uh <coughs> the cohomology of uh, of P infinity C is a polynomial ring uh, on the first turn class of, of O of one. So uh, let's see. <coughs> so let me write that here. Okay, so here we have one and then in degree minus two, we have H two. So the generator here is the first uh, turn class of Let's see. Maybe let maybe I'll call it T. So this is the first churn class of of O of one, and then uh, here we have the the cohomology of of infinite projective space, <laughs> and uh, building in uh, this negative stuff just gives you the corresponding Laurent polynomial ring. So here. We have the first churn class 
of uh, minus O of 1 <coughs> and uh, so on. Okay, so this is the baseline of this spectral sequence. Yeah? Of what? It's a it's a ring it's a ring spectrum. T at h of x is a e infinity ring spectrum. Uh, I don't know, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the Tate spectrum of anything is a is a ring. That's the Tate spectrum of a of a of a ring spectrum is a ring spectrum. <coughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So remember, this is in degree minus two. So in degree minus one, there's nothing, and uh, in degree one, there's nothing. There's nothing in all degrees. Then here above uh, each of these uh, lines, we have uh, uh, we have a copy of of T H H of of X. So this is T H H of X. Actually, uh, if if X is a scheme, these will continue a bit below. They will go down to minus the dimension of X. <coughs> but let, let's just keep it like this. Uh, now, uh <coughs> yeah. Now in this uh, spectral sequence. Uh uh, in general, you can have differentials. Uh, if x was defined over the rational numbers, then this would be a module, th this spectral sequence would be a module over the corresponding spectral sequence for x being the rational numbers. And in that case, everything is just, you only have this baseline, so there can be no differentials. And therefore, this periodicity that you see in the E2 term persists uh, to E infinity. So if X is defined over the rational numbers, then uh, this uh, theory TP is periodic and it's exactly cons periodic cyclic homology. In that case, you can, you can identify these homotopy groups with the homology of uh, uh, uh of of a bicomplex which looks very similar to to what I've written here. To do that, you're using one thing, namely you're using that tom isomorphism holds in singular uh, cohomology to untwist uh, what you have here. Okay, but in general, uh, you can have differentials. For example, if x uh, is the sphere then THH of the sphere is the sphere itself. And therefore, on each of these lines, we have uh, the stable, a copy of the stable homotopy groups of spheres. And uh, in, in that case, there's a lot of differentials. In fact, there's so many differentials that at e in when, when you get to E infinity, there's nothing left in negative degrees. Uh, this almost means that these groups are zero in negative degrees in the case of the sphere. The reason I say almost is that you have to read Bortman's paper about how conversions work in that case. And uh, what you really get is you, you get things like this, which is uh, a big uh, rational vector space. <coughs> Huge rational <laughs> vector space. <laughs> so. That shouldn't be there, and this is one of the problems with this theory, that uh, uh, this it's too complete, and we would like to get rid of that. <coughs> okay, so, but now in this case, uh, if we are uh, over a finite field, then uh, Berkstedt's calculation shows that TH8 uh, is uh, concentrated in, in even degrees. This so we have this divided bot element here, and then it's square, and so on. Whoops. So 
because everything is in even total degree, there, there cannot be any differentials. So we are in the same situation that if, if x is defined over a finite field or in general a perfect field of characteristic p, then uh, the periodicity that you have on the E2 page uh, remains and uh, uh, these groups become too periodic. And uh, if you remember back to the beginning, that's also what we have in the zeta function. The, the cohomology theory that should give us a cohomological interpretation of the zeta function should be periodic in this case. But it should not be periodic in general, and we see uh, that it's not. Uh, for example, also for the integers, th these this periodicity class dies. There's differentials on this that makes it go away. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. So what do we get? Uh, so here, if x is if x is big k, then here in degree zero, each of these uh, dots is a copy of k. Uh, so we get a ring uh, which has this descending filtration, such that all the filtration quotients are a copy of k, and. Uh, well, uh, if you know bit vectors, then a good guess is that that should be the ring of, of bit vectors, and uh, that turns out to be the case. And uh, depending on time, we may see uh, how you see that. <laughs> uh, already, by, by looking at this, uh, we know that, uh, that so the speckle sequence already tells us that whatever we have in degree two uh, will be a free module of rank one over what we have in degree zero. And to get a generator, we have to uh, find a homotopy element, or we have to pinpoint a homotopy element that represents this class in the spectral sequence. <coughs> uh, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. So I will get back to to how you do that. Uh, <coughs> but let me say something else first. So. Uh Okay, let's look at this. So, so, so this, by definition, was was TP. Uh, the reason I call this TP is that because is because uh, for the last twenty years, every time I met uh, 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 Kunz, uh, he asked me how to define topological periodic cyclic homology. And uh, then when I, I figured this out, uh, I, I, I thought that this is, is the right thing. But as, you could s as I just explained, it's not periodic in general, so it's really not a, a great name. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think a better name is to call this a higher Durand cohomology. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so now let's see. So we had this uh, Frobenius map. Here. And uh, and and that was equivariant. So here, now let's take the cohomology or the homotopy fixed points of that circle action. So let's see. So here it's this smaller circle.
so we have this list for doing that. Uh, there's always a map in this direction. Uh, if we define these things using, no, the other direction, sorry. <laughs> uh, if we define these things using genuine equivariance models, then this would be the corresponding fixed set of this spectrum. And this is the homotopy fixed set. So this is the map from the fixed set to the homotopy fixed set. Uh, another thing that 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 Scholte has uh, noted, which uh, uh, well, is that this is actually an equivalence. Uh, we're got not going to use that right now. Uh, so here, this is the homotopy fixed set, and that always maps to the Tate. So there's a map here to the Tate spectrum. <coughs> And uh, now, how do you calculate the homotopy groups of the homotopy fixed point? Well, that's a course, uh, the, the same spectral sequence, except you throw away everything that is, is uh, on the other side of this uh, line here. So uh, if we are below degree minus d, there's not going to be any difference. We're not uh, throwing anything away. So this map here uh, is an equivalence in degrees uh, less than or equal to minus d. <coughs> so if we are below that degree, then we can go back, use the Frobenius, and I guess we have to use uh, Scholz's observation that uh <laughs> we also <laughs> need to go here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <coughs> we get a map here, which is defined uh, in this range of degrees. But uh, if we are at a single prime, then these groups are periodic, so therefore we can extend this to the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the on the level of homotopy groups. We cannot do that on the, on the spectrum level because if you, uh, if, you if, you, if you calculate how that acts on this generator, it acts by multiplication by P inverse. So let's see. I seem to have done something wrong here. No, that's how I, I, I want to extend it. So this is a, uh <coughs> yeah, it, in, 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 in this range of degrees, this is a multiplicative map, uh, but it acts, uh, it maps T to P times T. And, uh <coughs> Therefore, if we want to extend it to a multiplicative map on the whole thing, we have to define it here to be multiplication by P inverse. So we can only do that after we invert P. <coughs> okay. <coughs> yeah. No. Uh, not that one. Uh, maybe it's inverse. You see, this is an I so. Th this the map phi p multiplies by p inverse in degree 2. Uh, so, but it's inverse, which this map is invertible when p, wi when x is smooth and proper, uh, then multiplies by p here. So it could be true for that, I, I don't know. 
Äh, <lacht> ja. So, uh, the thing I want to explain is that on X uh, we have uh, the geometric Frobenius. And uh, I want to explain that this uh, Frobenius that we get from TH8, uh, which came from descending from the natural numbers to the sphere, uh, knows uh, this uh, this geometric Frobenius. That's not quite true. We need another piece, which is uh, a motivic filtration on T uh, on on T P. <coughs> so, uh, so remember the motivic spectral sequence in K theory. Uh, so, this goes from H. Uh, J minus I of X with coefficients in some sheaf in, in, a, in a complex of sheaves, uh, which is written like this and converges to KI plus J of X. It's expected that such a thing exists for all X, but uh, now we only know it if X is let's say, smooth over a field or a little more than that. But it should always exist, but uh, it's not known how to define motivic cohomology unless you are smooth over a field. <coughs> uh, so, uh, for, th for the last 15 years, I have wanted to have a similar uh, spectral sequence converging to uh, TP or variance thereof. <coughs> uh, so this again should be a complex of sheaves uh, and uh, this should be much easier. Uh, but this is not a homotopy invariance theory so the methods of uh, A1 homotopy theory are completely useless uh, uh, to solve this problem. Uh <coughs> now, uh, but uh, thanks to uh, yeah, but this now exists and uh, and it has been constructed by uh, by Barton uh, Schulze. Uh, at least uh, if X is defined over uh, a perfect field or a perfectoid uh, base. <coughs> let, me, let, me, uh, let me also draw these spectral sequences. So, uh, so the one for K theory, let me try again. So the one for K-theory, if, if, if we look at as a complex of sheaves, uh, will have Milner K-theory uh, here on the, on the uh, fiber line, which will go up to some, typically go up to some degree. And then it will have a polynomial algebra on the bot elements uh, going out in this direction if we if we take finite coefficients. So the the speckle sequence sits in such a band here and uh, what used to be called the the Lichtenbaum Quillen conjecture was that uh, well it's <laughs> it's it's a theorem now. <laughs> so was that 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 once you are above this degree, uh, the groups are periodic by multiplication by the bot element is, not is, is, is a periodicity element. So, but there's this cutoff here. <coughs> uh, the same spectral sequence for, for TP. Uh, so, yeah, so here we have the bot element. Here instead we have the divided body element. And instead of having Milner K-theory, 
uh, we have uh, to run this. And uh, I will talk about Durham bit uh, next uh, Friday. So not this week, but next week. And uh, then again, uh, it looks like this. But now because of, of periodicity, we have, we have extended it in like that. So, so the spectral sequence here looks like this. <laughs> and uh, in fact, uh, this complex here, uh, is just uh, the drum bit complex itself, uh, but but that involves a Cartier isomorphism to get that. So the thing we need from this is that uh, this gives a filtration on the TP groups. You can see where, so if you have a total degree here, you will you will there will there it will be filtered, <coughs> and uh, so let's call this. Uh Let's let's call this W. So, so W is is the motivic <coughs> weight. Uh, let me also say uh, here, if X is instead defined over uh, this big, big ring OCP that we had earlier, then. Uh, the corresponding complexes is uh, what uh, Bart Morrow and Scholze has defined, and they call them A omega. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now back to this uh, Frobenius here. So now you can. So how does this act on the TP groups? It acts. Uh, by multiplication by Q to the weight times uh, the Frobenius uh, to the rth. So <laughs> remember that Q is P to the rth. So we could think of this as being 5Q. But yeah. <coughs> so, uh, so the thing we, so we don't need this, this Frobenius itself. We, we just need, uh, this weight filtration uh, of, of the TP groups. Okay, so now let's uh, get back to uh, to uh, Deninger's uh, formula. Uh, let's see, I can take this away. So let's see. Uh, yeah. So so Deninger's formula was like this. And remember that this should be a, a countably dimensional complex vector space. Well, it's not. It's a module over the uh, ring of width vectors. Uh, <coughs> so, to get a complex num to get a complex vector space out of this, we unfortunately have to choose an embedding of this ring into the complex numbers, and then we can extend scalars. Uh, the Grothendieck group does the same, the Grothendieck school does the same thing, they also have the same problem. And uh, yeah, this is, this, is a, this is a big problem, but uh, <laughs> let's leave that aside for the moment. So now we can extend scalars. here, and uh, then we would like to have this formula. Uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, Denninger also tells us what theta should be. So uh, theta should be the derivative uh, of the Frobenius flow at t equal to 1. So, uh, so here we have a qth Frobenius, but uh, uh, so Deninger uh, expects of that there should be a f an, an action of the multiplicative group of real numbers on this cohomology theory uh, through such uh, Frobenius operators, and then theta uh, should be the infinitesimal generator of that action. Uh, so how can we do this? We only have one value. Uh, well, if we have theta, then we know what that one value should be. Namely, that should be the operator uh, Q to the theta. Uh, so now we can just we just solve this equation. So we say that theta is a log to the base Q of the Frobenius. <coughs> uh, does that make sense? Well. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we can break it into two. We can take the semi-symbol part of this, which is just a diagonal matrix, and then we can take uh, the unipotent part. This is conjectured to be uh, the identity, but uh, even if it is, it's not, it, it's not a problem because uh, here we can just use the series. Uh, so, th so this is okay. Uh, so what do we do here? So let's see. So, so remember that this is too periodic. So let's choose two degrees, say TP1 and TP0. So on on these, let me write it. Uh, so on TP zero and TP one, uh, use uh, some uh, some branch of log to define this. <coughs> so uh, yeah. So these are finite dimensional uh, complex vector spaces. So, and uh, this is a diagonalizable uh, operator, invertible operator on that finite dimensional vector space. So we just choose a branch of log and then apply that to the, to the eigenvalues. <coughs> so this gives a definition uh, here. Uh, but now, since this thing is too periodic, uh, we can use all branches by, uh, so define <coughs> uh, theta on, on the periodicity class uh, I've not given that a name. May maybe let me continue to call it T, but, but I should, should really take a a homotopy element that, that represents T. Uh, so define this to be multiplication by 2 pi i over log Q. <coughs> so uh, then we have, so what does this mean? It means that we define theta uses using a branch of the logarithm here, but then on the next group, we use the next branch and so on. So we, in this way, we will use all the branches of log to define uh, theta. And uh, if we do that, then this is a theorem <coughs> that uh, this formula uh, holds. So uh <coughs> yeah, so this gives a, a cohomological interpretation of uh, the whole theta function 
uh, by this infinite, infinite dimensional uh, cohomology theory. <coughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, in the remaining time, uh, let me uh, explain how uh, how you see, for example, that this ring is that T P naught is the is the ring of Witt vectors. <coughs> Well, it doesn't, but that's a uh, yeah. But uh, but uh, that's uh, that's something you only know because of the solution of the the V conjectures. Uh, I mean, it's 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 this thing that these uh, the eigenvalues of uh, uh, of the Frobenius are V numbers and uh, so uh, their absolute value is independent of the choice of embedding and then that amount to this amounts to this uh, regularized determinant being independent of the embedding Yeah, this is X smooth and proper over a finite field. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, thanks. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's see. So uh, remember this uh, Frobenius map. Uh, <coughs> so there's always a map here from the uh, homotopy fixed set. And uh, now uh, Nicholas and Scholze then uh, define the fixed set to be the pullback of this diagram. <coughs> Uh, here we have the norm map from the homotopy orbits and since this is a pullback we also have the homotopy orbits here. So, uh, so we have such a co-vibration sequence which we call the, the fundamental for co-fibration sequence. Uh, from here we have a map back to to TH8 of X. It's the the etomomorphism of the spectral sequence and then this composite map here uh, is the Frobenius. So uh, Bjorn talked about uh, these maps R and F in his uh, lecture yesterday. <coughs> uh, I first talked about this sequence here. Uh, uh, so the first time I spoke at at Ober Wolfach as a student, I talked about this, and uh, uh, I'm very embarrassed that I forgot to say that this is a generalization of uh, of uh, what Tom Dick did to calculate the fixed sets of the uh, uh, of finite groups acting on the sphere spectrum. So uh, 
if X is the sphere, then this uh, was first constructed by by Tom Dick and by Siegel. <coughs> and uh, in that case, this map has a section which is equivalent to saying that this map factors through uh, the homotopy fixed set, uh, but that's not true uh, for T88 in general. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So uh, so let me call this TR1 XP and this TR2 XP and so on. So you can you can continue and define uh, this for all uh, x. And uh, so what is then true is that uh, this gives you uh, width vectors. Uh, so if you plug in a ring, then on pi naught, this gives you the ring of width vectors and these maps F and R uh, precisely become uh, Frobenius and uh, restriction of, of width vectors. Like this. <coughs> so, uh, so in this way we can calculate Pi naught of 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 uh, uh, of this is the corresponding sieve here. <coughs> yeah. So. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Let me write it <laughs> here. Uh <coughs> Yeah, so uh, <coughs> let's see. So uh, let's see what do I want to write here. <laughs> Let me write x. So, so this Frobenius uh, induces a Frobenius here for every n. And uh, here we have the restriction in in uh, Tate cohomology uh, which on this side uh, corresponds to uh, to the Frobenius map if let's see I think I should call this something else maybe like this uh, <coughs> so uh, this will give a map on uh, on the limit Uh, but this then receives a map from uh, the Tate spectrum for the whole uh, circle and uh, this map is a weak equivalence uh, after P completion. And uh, this was TP. Uh, if we are over a finite field uh, or over a field of characteristic P, well, so so in the case I con I considered smooth and proper over 
a, fi a finite field, uh, this is already p complete, and therefore this is this is a this is an equivalence. <laughs> uh, this map here uh, is is not an equivalence. <coughs> uh, so here the homotopy groups go down to degree minus d, uh, whereas here they are uh, periodic. <coughs> And uh, I think of this map uh, as a kind of uh, analytic continuation. So uh, on this side, we could not quite define this uh, periodicity of the, this Frobenius. Uh, well, we could after we could define it on on the level of homotopy groups after inverting p. Uh, on this side, however, th the there its inverse exists as a map of spectra. So, so this side behaves like an Euler product. It's it's uh, it's given explicitly, and we we have the structure that we want. Uh, explicitly defined here. And then to extend it to this side, we need a theorem that tells us that this map here is an isomorphism be above a certain degree. And uh, that's a theorem of myself and and if Madsen that uh, uh, that's the case, uh, namely in degrees uh, greater than or equal to the dimension uh, of x. <coughs> so, but uh, uh, in in this case, where you're smooth, and s where, where you're smooth over a perfect field, no, smooth and proper over a perfect field of characteristic p. So let me say that if if x is smooth and proper uh, over a perfect field. of characteristic p, then uh, this map is an isomorphism in degrees greater than or equal to the dimension. <coughs> okay, so now you can see uh, if this was k itself, then here we would have t p zero of k, but here we would have the inverse limit of uh, over the Frobenius of the of the Witt vector rings, but because the field is perfect, uh, this limit here is isomorphic. S so for the bit vectors, this is isomorphic to the corresponding limit with respect to the restriction maps, and that's the, the bit ring. So uh, this is how the analysis uh, of these things uh, uh, occur, that uh, you translate to that size, and then you use this uh, Diagram here, which was uh, originally uh, uh, used by by Siegel and Tom Dick, and for the lower sequence, I think this is is due to John Greenleaf. Okay, so let me stop here. It's true at each stage, and then uh, it's true at each stage. Uh, for that, you only need smoothness. But then, in order to uh, deal with the Tate, uh, I think you need properness uh, to to get here.